BPF World Team Championships live from Agadir, Morocco. Huge, huge game this afternoon as Northern Ireland take on Morocco. Though with the home advantage and probably a little bit more required because if they lose, they're likely to be out of the competition. Jawad Tabit breaking off for Morocco and he's going to scratch straight off the break. This match has a lot on the line. Finals and positions three, four, five and six into the playoffs. Be vulnerable. The only team that's qualified through and safe into the top six is England with 20 points. They've played 12, 110 long. Points going on the board there, making it even tougher for Morocco. They are desperate need of this win. It's Declan Brennan at the table on the left for Northern Ireland and Ronan McCarthy at the table on the right, although that is a rare miss from the world champion. Nicely on it. Imagine it'll just be a safety from Rocco. It's not particularly easy to hide this cue ball, but he's done a pretty good job of it. Very nice. Okay, dropped it in so oh, he can take the yellow top nice. right. Yeah, he had lots of angle there. Had to really kill that in. But again, if he's straight, he's in trouble here. If he's straight, he can only go up the table and leave the thin yellow bottom left and then getting on the eight ball is a tough ask. So he needs some angle here just to stun across to the right. It's Anna Abruk at the table for Morocco. Not seen too much of Abruk in this competition. Lovely finish from Declan Brennan to put Northern Ireland 1-0 up. Great stuff from Declan. Very classy finish. One of the best players in the world. He'll be one of the big favourites to win the world title. On right now, it's all about the teams and the final or penultimate team game. It's good that he's got plenty of angle here. He can slide across the table and play both yellows in the same pocket. I mean, he could look to play a cannon, but that would be dangerous. If the natural works from here, then just accept it. Well, that's a lovely shot from a Brook. It's okay. He's and cross the T's. Shot. Heart of the pocket hammered in by Anas Abruk of Morocco. That's a relieved looking man going back in the shed for the Moroccan. These are laid out very nicely for him, very inviting. Always worth pointing out, especially to our viewers, maybe watching for the first time this week here at the World Championships, that team pool is like nothing else. The expectation, the weight that comes with playing for your country. No finish. Absolutely no finish is easy. The reason why you see these big reactions and the big celebrations when the success is reached is because the pressure is so much out there. It's a release when it's that eight ball goes in. Yeah, it's like nothing else. Can't compare it to an individual event. And he, Rab's gone too far. Yeah, that's going to cause him half an issue. It sounds silly to say with a ball that's almost hanging over a pocket, but that was his tricky ball just because you want to get as straight on it as possible. Gary Clark breaks off for Northern Ireland. Makes a ball too, and he's got a presentable chance. Rab could just screw straight back through the middle here. He's, oh, that's not bad, he's hit the gap. Yeah, that was really clever. He knew if he bumped the eight ball, he can overhit the shot. It gives him the window, so he's guaranteed it by just a soft control cannon into the eight ball. Good thinking, and now he can just float into space. Yeah, very tidy from Rab McCullough. Ultimate Pool Challenger Series player has been to a final, I believe. Oh. 
But it's one of those players, and there's plenty of them here this week in Morocco that are just elevated to another level when playing for their country. McCullough has been as good as anyone this week, and that run continues. He really has been one of the leading lights for Northern Ireland, and you know a team full of stars. I think there's four ultimate ball professionals in their team, and he's been one of their standout players. It shows you how well Rab's played this week. Yeah, just talking on the individual stats, the player who's won the most frames in the entire tournament is from Morocco. It's Abdurrahman Chofi, who's gone along at a really good click as well for the Moroccans. We'll see him in action in a few frames time. He's got Ronan Fay in the first set of matches here. He's gone along at a near 70% click. Top of the percentages. This may surprise you. May. Top of the percentages. Mr. Tom Cousins. Yeah, I mean, and he's been used sparingly by Wales as well, which is quite incredible. So the fact that he could win the the most frames, he's still in with a chance of that with a couple of matches to go. And yet he's playing less than other players. It's quite incredible. Yeah, he's won 24 out of 31, which is an amazing record. Just behind him, by the way, on the percentage at least, Shane Thompson, 22 from 30, and Rona McCarthy, 24 from 33. Those are your top three in terms of the percentage. Always think the number of frames won is a good indicator, but for me the percentage is important too. And while we're at it, a big shout out to Jeremiah and I do of South Africa. 25 out of 36, 67%, 69%. He was fantastic when we got to see him on our TV yeah. table, wasn't he? The, the way he held himself and conducted himself around the table, the amount of positivity he was showing was absolutely fantastic. So great to see those stats. And the one thing you would say about Northern Ireland, team of stars they may be, Ronan McCarthy, the reigning world champion, but he's been so well backed up. Gary Clark, Ryan Marcus, Robert McCullough, all going along at just about 70%. They've got exactly the same record, 23 wins from 33 frames. And actually, if Declan Brennan sort of comes to the party a little bit, he's only rolling along at just over 50%. Northern Ireland could well be near unstoppable. Of course, there's so much to consider when you take in to consideration those percentages. You never know who you're playing. You might not even get a touch of the table. And he does play lead-off for most of the matches, does Declan. Gary Clark gets his job done. <laughs> Super stuff from Gary. Now, how about young Ryan Marcus? What a player he has been for Northern Ireland at this tournament. Still so young. And he has been ice cool. He's the youngest on this team by a little way. He's been taking plenty of grief off his older teammates who naturally, as soon as you get that young, that young fella into the mix, <laughs> he's always the most picked on. But he's taken it all in great spirit and a great addition to this team. It tells you what they think about him, that they sent him out for the anchor leg. Oh. I mean, and he held up and he took it down as well when we saw them earlier on in the tournament against Ireland. It just shows you the belief they have in him. Ryan Marcus has a win against Tom Cousins on his resume in a fully-fledged Pro Series match, which shows you the level he is capable of, of performing at. As with a lot of young players, it's about finding that consistency, about finding that constant level. But Ryan, for me, has as good a chance as any. Breaking off on the right side, Dylan Leary for Northern Ireland. And that is a lethal cut break from Lethal Leary. He's made a ball. But as always with the cut break, that's what can happen. You make a ball, you get a chance, and then you look at the layout, and it's just a little bit horrible. A messy one. To be honest, that's the sort of layout I associate with Team Paul as well, where it's very bitty, very tricky. You've already got to work yourself out and find something. Ryan's in good shape here. The red below the, the eight ball 
goes bottom right. The eight ball doesn't have a pocket. Maybe enough showing to go bottom left if, if you can get there. But I suspect he may be looking at just a little bump when he plays the last red. Mm, not great if he's straight. If he's straight, he can't get low on the red, which means he then can't play the bump. So he'd need the eight ball to go, or he probably would have maybe have to play for a double. If he can just, maybe he's got just enough angle to get just below the straight. He had the perfect angle, in fact. Cash ball in the frame then for Ryan Marcus. Oh, and it's not gone well. Yeah, the previous shot, he had the perfect angle and he just under hit it. You had to be, he, he, he probably needed to reach the cushion on the previous shot. He just left himself that hair too straight. Oh, he's now looking at right center. I think he has to make it clean. It doesn't, I don't know if it squeezes in off the yellow. I think he has to go clean here. He'll go close to this, though. He'll go Still very close. massive shot. Doesn't quite get the line and scratches for good measure. So cue ball in hands for Usama Al Maschini. One of Morocco's leading lights. Dylan's got the angle to move some reds around here. He's trying to be precise so you can see he's trying to hit the red in such a way that he's going to ping all his other balls open. That's not bad. It may not have been exactly how he played it. Difficult to say, but I don't think that's too bad for him. He's certainly on the red. It's just whether he can just open it up. Still two, at least maybe three delicate shots required for Dylan. Fully expect Usama to run through this counter clearance. Question when he wants to go up the table as in easier to get on the eight ball fr nicely from a, a ball at the bottom of the table. And Dylan has played that beautifully. Just bumping the red out the way so that he opens up the red to the bottom left. Now does he have an angle where he can get through to it into that pocket? Dylan's come up short. That was such a small gap he was trying to find. Often the way with these delicate finishes where you've got to be very precise and pick it apart. The last shot or two gets really difficult. Wow, very surprising miss from Usama. Surprising the way he wanted to play that as well, to come back across the yellow. You'd think he'd just be dragging it in to leave plenty of angle and almost come down the table and back in line. And he's got away with it. Full ball snooker for Ryan, but it gives him another opportunity to come up with something big off a cushion. Not a surprise to see Dylan foul. He was in a tough spot there. Morocco will get the chance for the counter clearance on the right hand side as well. Where's the eight ball? Where is that eight ball? <laughs> Up it stays. I tell you what, that is a great result for Ryan though. Cue ball staying on the table for the starter, but I think the eight ball blocks the yellow to the right center. Bushaib Farhat. It is who comes to the table on the right side after Dylan broke down. Chance to make it 3 2. It's 
Is he going long or does it sneak in the middle for Usama? Going long. What a shot that is from the little tiger. That was brilliant. He was bang under it after missing the easy pot in the previous visit as well. Brilliant from the small target. Usama Maschini in business. And gets Morocco back in it at 3-2. Teammates enjoyed that one. And they're enjoying the work as well of Bouchaib Farhat. Yeah, perfect. Just oh, he'd have loved he, that to have sat. He must. He, he just left himself the wrong side of that ball. He would love to have been the other side, so he could have just rolled through and bumped into the red. And that's the reason he's awkward on the eight. He's doubling it, is he? I think so. And it flies. Boucher Farhat gets the victory. Two frames in succession from Morocco, and it's three all after six. Abdurrahman Shofi is the last man out in set one. He takes on Ronan Fay. Synchronized eight ball. Cue ball. That's tough. And look at this split for Ronan Fay. Just laid out lovely for him. Red cert just perfect. He doesn't necessarily need to play a cannon. He could if he wanted to just to develop the red on the right hand side. But equally, he could just play on it, drop it down, and he's got connections from it. So this is just really nice. Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland, rather, are the, uh, the home team, which means they get to pick their starting seven. They pick an order, and it's up to Morocco to then fulfill the different matches on the other side. But it is no coincidence to see Ronan Fay go last, last, and last. He's the seventh man up. He is the Iceman. He is the finisher for this Northern Irish side. They put out Declan Brennan and Ronan McCarthy early. And it's up to Ronan Fay and Dylan Leary to get the job done at the end. I think Ronan may be just going for the, the cannon. Well, he's looking up the table. I would have been tempted to leave the one up the table to connect to the one left centre. So it, it doesn't really need to. Eight balls in such a strong position. Just would have been tempted if you are going to play a cannon to get it done early. Great chance for deck on the right as well. I know you're not generally a fan of cannoning into balls. Are you tempted to play the cannon here if you run it? Yeah, I think so because it's so it's quite tight to land on it, and I think it's such a controlled cannon that he's it's going to be he's going to be barely moving it. It's just going to be a little bump down. Well, it's come out lovely. Yeah, that little flick on the yellow on the way, way through wasn't by design. He was hoping to go clean so that it'd stay on the red to the bottom left. And actually, it's come out really well for him, but for a second there, he may have feared that it wasn't going to. Slightly awkward queuing for the big man. Just queued that in nice. So wants to leave himself plenty of angle on his final red on the bottom rail because he wants to come up nicely into the middle of the table, and that is job done for his final red and then the eight ball waiting. Oh, that stays up. That's a surprise. That looked like a big pace. pocket for Declan Brennan. Yeah, just like the pace. Anything but straight for Ronan Fay. Plenty of angle so that you can just make the pot and cue ball takes care of itself. Pace control. 
one ball pass straight is perfect. Just doesn't want to leave it significantly with angle. Either way, really. I mean, he can deal with it if it happens, but you want it as simple as possible. Ah, it's just perfect from Ronan Fate. Perfect visit. Ice cool as ever. I think Amin Amir has missed his cannon. I'm almost certain he was playing into those balls. Yeah, that caused him a little bit of a headache. Maybe he should look at some sort of loss of turn option. Look what it means to Ronan Fay. End of the first set then. All seven players have played. And Northern Ireland take a 4-3 lead into the second third of the match. Amin Amiri has been one of Morocco's best players at this tournament. He's got a really high percentage of frames won. He's won a lot for this Moroccan side. But I will say, when we have seen Morocco on this main table, he has, for me, just struggled a little bit. Not quite performed to the level which I think we think he can. Just that I think the errors have been surprising. He's played some really good stuff, but the, the errors have not almost been the simple shots. Is it going to be a safety or is it full-blooded? I think it has, has to be safe. Yeah, it's pretty good. I feel like he's just left the loss of turn late, though. But that has come out really well for him. I thought he was going to try and do something like that very early in this visit. He got rid of four of his reds before he did it. Well, he wanted to do it with the first shot of the visit, but he got it wrong, and that cost him time, and it cost him balls on the table. Declan Brennan has equal capital in this frame, three balls each. He's second favourite at this point, but he's a scrapper. That's pretty good. Abdelrahim Benduro breaks off for Morocco and breaks dry. Ronan McCarthy, the master. And the reigning world champion comes to the table. Had his chance in his first frame of the match, didn't take it. Well, that's not ideal for Amin on the far side. Declan's got a decision to make here. The safety shot's tough because if he leaves any sight of a red, he should lose the frame. But he's on this yellow to the top right, and if he makes it, he'll win the frame. How much do you want to back your potting ability to come up with a screaming pot down the cushion? Honestly, I, it, may be the, it may be his chance to win this frame. He's going to work out whether there's a better safety option or not. I think the pot's more guaranteed than the safety, if I'm honest. No, he is going to go away from it. He's got to get this cue ball right. He may be flying down the table here. He may be playing some sort of cannon. Well, he can do it off the one in the middle now instead. So he's being aggressive. As my point was, he just couldn't be safe. Lovely long part. Cued in beautifully. It's not guaranteed to come out well. So Probably needs to fly him with a fair bit of pace. Yeah, he's odds against, you'd say. Big shot. That's not too bad. And what I mean by that is he could play this shot up to the top right with an element of safety. Drop it in dead weight top right and just let the cue ball drift level with the red. He wouldn't leave anything on. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. Some pot if he makes it, mind. But if it sits over the pocket and he gets the ball safe and leaves nothing on, then it's job done as well. Look at this for queuing there. How the knuckle of the pocket. It's some effort. It's some effort. It sits on the jaw. I think he's actually just pushed that cue ball a little bit too far at the table. I think this clips back for Amina Miri in Morocco. Yeah, maybe half a turn too much. 
And the yellow's just spit away from the pocket as well. Just enough. I wonder if he brushed off the right-hand side as we look, whether that yellow would clip in. Oh, he's going to be aggressive. Whoa, he's had a result. He's had a result that very nearly went very badly. But he's, he's great, really. Just drop this into the middle. Leave yourself an eight ball. He's a phenomenal potter. I mean, Amiri, he got a spot on the World Snooker Tour a couple of years ago. You've got to back your queuing. And he will. Punches that red in. This for four all. He's overcut it. He's overcut it. I'm really surprised he went for the cut rather than the shot in the corner. And if he's thinking about where the cue ball is going to finish as part of that shot, then maybe that's in his, in his head. But as you say, he's a great potter. It's a pot to the corner to win the frame. Yeah. I think this still clips back in for, for deck. Yeah, it does. Fairly comfortably, I think. Our cameras can be a bit deceiving. This might look a little bit far away. I think this is pretty simple. Yeah. Nice and straightforward. Listen to the Northern Irish. Ronan McCarthy gives his congratulations. Declan Brennan goes back in the shed. And he's pretty pleased. I wonder if Amiri had his chance again, whether he'd go corner or stay with the centre. He's such a good potter. He's a fabulous cueist. I just think, yeah. I just think for me, uh, regardless of cue ball, I think the, the cut's just a harder shot. Yeah. I, I, for me it is, but every player will see it differently. Some players will prefer the shot in the middle and the, the corner. I just feel like the corner you're just queuing through one you just you, it's all in your eye line it's all comfortable obviously it's pressure shot you've got to queue on well but it's all there in front of you uh, it's gone now and they're two behind but maybe not for much longer that was a brilliant shot has it just popped out far enough it'd be very unfortunate if that red doesn't pass the yellow to the right center It does now. A couple of excellent shots to open things up. He's going to need a big positional shot. We'll come back to that one in a minute as we see Big Rab breaking off for Northern Ireland. didn't want to hit that yellow. That is a grimace from Abdelrahim Benduro. He did not want to hit that yellow. Almost a mirror image of what we've just seen missed on the other table now. This time it has to be the thin clip into the right centre. It's a little bit easier than the one missed on the other table though. It's still not easy. Overcuts it. The only consolation for Abdelrahim is that this finish on yellows is not easy. Yeah, Ronan's a master at winning frames in these situations, though. Looks like a fairly obvious shot just to bump one yellow out and use the other yellow to snooker. It'll just be working out what, we he, what he'd be leaving, how easy would it be to maybe go two cushions to get the eight ball in right centre. So that may be a part of his thinking here. Rocco may be in a bit of early trouble here. 
Yeah, right, see, that's clever. the difference. So a lot of players would just play the, the bottom yellow there, bumping out. May will have left two cushions and a shot on, so he plays it the other way around. And it's he's so less clever. worried about seeing a sight at the eight ball as he is making it more awkward. He obviously wanted to get the, you know, get the full ball snooker, but wasn't concerned that he didn't. He doesn't mind if Abdurrahim moves this eight ball. He doesn't think he can make it anywhere. Abdurrahim looks like he's going to have a go at eight ball off yellow here as Rab McCullough takes one down on the right side. Oh, that was some effort. Great effort from Abdurrahim Benduro. But Ronan McCarthy, in playing his percentages, is going to get a bit of a dolly of a chance by his standards to win this frame. I think we both agreed and both admired that Ronan McCarthy shot, but that did have its risk with it. it did he he there went really close. He wanted to get the snooker, he just did not want to leave it, the eight ball hanging over a pocket. And it also meant he bumped two balls off a cushion rather than one. And, you know, he, he's had to you know, live on the edge for one shot there, but now the balls are laid out for him to chance to clear up. So break off on the right side after Rob McCullough got the job done. That was against Jawad Tabit as well. And any time you can keep Jawad Tabit off the table, that is to your advantage. Good solid hit. This is close. Oh. Whew. Goodness me. He's had to survive a couple here, Ronan McCarthy, and that eight ball sitting there has just caused him half a problem as well. Lovely shot from Gary Clark. Yellow on the right-hand side nearest the centre pocket is frozen to the jaw, but I'm pretty sure that still's going to drop in, no problem. It's how he deals with the one nearest the eight ball is the question mark here for Rona McCarthy. Does it squeeze in off the cushion? off the jaw of the eight ball. If it does, it's definitely a case of playing it now. Don't leave it last because you're moving the eight ball. Well, he wanted it to drop. He did. But he knew there was a chance it wouldn't. But how do you like these? I mean, it's a tough, tough combination shot. Well, we saw yesterday, didn't we? Jordan Sinnott of Ireland against Northern Ireland. 
Make an unbelievable eight ball on the combo. This is, I think, significantly harder, though. Eight ball nearest the cushion. The yellow's actually in the side of that pocket. I think he has to take it on. I just don't see he's got any other choice. I mean, he could roll the eight ball right on top of the yellow, maybe. That's the only other choice. But then, I mean, and Ronan will just play away. I'm not entirely sure what he played there. He didn't play it with enough pace to make the combo. He didn't. He maybe was thinking he could top on and, and pot it, have the eight ball set over and knock it in. If he was trying to leave the eight ball on top of the yellow, it was way too hard. So, judging by his reaction, it was almost like he was caught in three or four different minds. Didn't co didn't yeah. commit to any. The Northern Irish fired up. Ronan McCarthy with this eight ball for a seven three lead. Three on the spin for Northern Ireland. Little shake of the head from Ron McCarthy. He knows he got away with one a touch there. And Gary Clark, meanwhile, whilst I've been talking about that, has missed on the on the table. This is Anna Abruk at the table for Morocco and they need a bit of a turnaround here. They've lost by my reckoning the last four frames in a row. Yeah, last four. It was three all. Well, if you're Gary Clark here after missing, I think you take this. And it is confirmed for Morocco looking at the other results in the table if they lose this match they cannot progress in the competition they have to win their last two games and have other results go their way now yeah India have won Wales have won the only team vulnerable to Morocco are France and to make matters worse for Morocco not only are they 7-3 down and they are what a shot, Gary Clark. Come back to that in a second, because Gary Clark's got this eight ball. I, I, I like the loss of turn shot from a brook there. I think that was the right shot. But I think if you... I always think when you're playing, especially team pool, what does your opponent most want to do? Avoid that. Yeah. Gary Clark would have taken that chance, you feel. It's like a free hit at a long red. He's a great potter, Gary Clark. This is close. This is close. Has he fluked it? No. But there's some mileage in this one. I'm just going to quickly come back to my point as Ryan Marcus gets us underway on the other side. And make matters worse for Morocco. They're 7-3 down here and they have to win to have any chance. Their final match in the group stages as well is against the pre-tournament favourites, England. So right now, things are looking very tough for them. They need to turn this one around, win their final game, and have other results go their way. But all they can do is fight here. Important to get the snooker here. Important to get the snooker in a good way because there would be a way of making that eight ball off one cushion. Ryan goes in off, giving cue ball in hand. Just a, a strange visit to the table for Morocco on the right. Cleared the one over the pocket, and then played it that way. Maybe just didn't get where he wanted to to be able to play a good snooker. But looks like he's got the snooker well enough to stop Gary from being able to pot it. Easy enough for Gary to hit this. But if he rests into the eight ball, four ball, is he opening everything up? Yeah, very good. 
He risked getting very close to the yellow there to make sure that the eight ball stayed over the pocket. And now the fact that the ball's no longer over the pocket on the top left just adds more pressure. Well, it was a very brave shot trying to slide the yellow underneath the eight ball, but I may have left Gary a chance to pot this off the yellow now. Yeah. And it went in straight. A let off for Gary Clark that he grabs. And they go eight three in front things very much going Northern Ireland's way five frames on the trot that should end here And it does, finally, Morocco stop the rot. Get going again. Eight frames to four now. They're four frames behind. But we have seen turnarounds out here on the TV table. Things can turn around when there's two frames going on at the same time. Both frames finishing at roughly the same time. Means that slight delay. We're ready to go again. Huge two frames, you feel, for Morocco here. And they're going to get the opportunity in the right hand table. A messy layout, though. Yellows look good. But we have. Eight ball and one yellow as a slight problem, but very much a solvable problem. Abdurrahman Shafi has been the go to guy for Morocco in this tournament. It's where they must start if they are to roll away the stone in this match. Chalfi must get things done here. It's so difficult to come from behind when your opponent goes so close to the finish line. Northern Ireland were 9-3 up against Ireland yesterday. And Ireland managed to pull it all the way back to a decider but that is the exception and not the rule it's incredibly difficult to do that let's put it into context Morocco must win seven of the next nine frames Ronan Fay breaks off for Northern Ireland, which will complete the second set of matches. He's made the eight ball, and that's the only ball he's made. Very rare we see that. Eight ball gets replaced, and it's actually going to be Morocco who comes to the table. Very rare we see that.
Well, that wasn't the cannon he was looking for, but it'll take the result. I think he must have been thinking about the cannon on the red. Would have held him on both yellows, but it's come out well for him. the eight ball goes left center which I think it does then no issues here just clip it in thin track down the big open space loads of room to be on the eight ball Just potted it a shade thick, making this a nervy enough eight ball. He's been the star player for Morocco this week. Needs to come up big right now. Morocco have missed eight balls in this match. They cannot afford to miss another one. He's going to the corner. Boom. And boy, did they need that. Abdurrahman Shafi is always so stoic. Gives very little away. And how much better a scoreboard does 8-5 look compared to 8-4? Things turn around quickly on two frames, two table matches. <laughs> Got a question will be how much is it in Northern Ireland's mind? It happened to them a few times in the tournament, being in strong leads and being pegged back. Well, if Usama Maschini can make this 8-6, you really do feel like it's game back on. I'll not go as far to say that he should. But this is a very good chance. Just get a, a, a turn or two higher than straight on the next ball. I think he's slightly worried that he's going to go too far and snooker himself, which is why he's just having a second look at it. Yeah, there's a little bit of noise in the arena there, just on his backswing, so he gets him off the shot. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Players are not under a huge amount of time pressure in these matches that you might be used to seeing with ultimate pool. These are 45-second shot clocks, which for the majority of these players will actually feel like an ocean of time, really. Yeah, those that are used to the 15, 45 is a long time. And use the red to get the perfect angle. Eight six. Eight six. Morocco have won the last three frames in a row. See there, the man in the centre of the picture in the pale blue shirt. That's Omar Munshid. 
part of the Moroccan team that won the World Team Championships almost a decade ago now. He's still a huge fan of his country and the game. He's gone from player to supporter. Amazing turnaround. Lost five on the trot, now won three on the trot. Need to keep that momentum going. Messy layout, though. That's a lovely shot. That red goes middle pocket now. That is a really nice shot. Declan trying to get cues. See if it's a good chance or not. See if he's happy. Right on the left-hand side now becomes the problem. He may play into it now. I think he might have a shade too much angle. Maybe he can just get the yellow. Yeah, just too much. Definitely tried, didn't he? <laughs> Issue was, I think he actually just played it too hard. Yeah, it throws the cue ball just that little bit wider. I don't think even if he floats it in, he, can, he could get to it. Always oh, looked too wide. Rona McCarthy breaking off for Northern Ireland on the left. This time he can definitely get into it. That'll do. Yeah. That's okay. Assuming that red still goes right centre, then that's absolutely fine. Okay, there's a couple of small windows to find, but you're in a position where everything now goes. Rona McCarthy with a successful break. And these yellows are just sitting. He'd have loved that to have stayed up, mind. Just to give himself a few more options. He would loved, would have loved it to stay up, but I still think he's in perfect shape. Yeah. I fully expect Ronan to make the break clearance here. Oh, I wasn't sure about that. The red on the left is still a problem. He's just a bit straight on that shot, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought he might drop that in and try and just hit the gap between the yellow and the eight ball and then drop it in thin. It would have been a really tough pot, but now it's going to be a really tough pot. And he's got to get there, which is hard to do. Cue ball. Oh, he's had a nudge. He's had a great nudge because he is there. This clips in. He has had a real touch here, Anna Abruk. He's got his shovel out in this frame and he is digging deep. This is a massive shot. Just jaws it. Could be a big moment. Ronan McCarthy with a deadly break and run, really, this. That break is one of the best I've ever seen Ronan hit. Just never in doubt the minute they came out. You you don't often get those sorts of frames at this late stage of team matches. The pool gods just usually aren't that kind. But Amina Miri is on the receiving end of a routine clearance from Ronan McCarthy. And Northern Ireland have a potential here with Declan Brennan at the table on the other side to go on the hill and obvious knock Morocco out of the tournament. Obvious problem ball for Declan here. One on the right-hand side, he's looking at it right now. Malta and India both won this morning. It means Morocco must win this match to have any chance of getting into the top six. How positive is he going to be on this? Does he just drop it in, leave an awkward angle on the next ball, or does he really cue this one in well and get perfect? There's your answer. 
also in his mind. He may well, hang on a minute. The way he's looking at this, he's thinking about is he on this yellow? Well, if he's not, he's been very unlucky. Because that's the only position on the table in which he's not on this yellow. I think he is. He's going to bend it. He's digging this just to bend it. Just a, just a hint. Just had to turn it over a hint. No problems at all. Morocco break off on the left side. And it is going to be dry. No friends. Big moment potentially. It's Ahmed El Wahab on the left side. He's just come in for his first frame in the match against Rab McCullough. And Ahmed is not going to get a ball off the break. Declan Brennan can take Northern Ireland to the hill here and Rab McCullough can get things done. Because reds are all there, actually, on the left side. Northern Ireland go on the hill. It's 10-6. Match has plenty on it for a Northern Ireland as well. A win here would knock Morocco out. But it would also take Northern Ireland into the top two. They are currently level on points with Ireland and Wales and India, having played a game less. It's incredible, actually, whilst Rab makes his way through these, this finish, how tight the table is. England are top, having played 13, won 11. Northern Ireland are second, having played 12 and won 9. And then third, fourth, fifth and sixth have all played 13, won 9, lost 4. And I, th I think, though, looking at the table, if Northern Ireland win this, they are mathematically guaranteed to finish second in, or at least in the top two, simply because their frame difference is significantly higher than anybody else. So that I think it, maybe not mathematically secure, but they'd have to, you know, be an unbelievable turnaround. They almost lose their last game, twenty-one nil or something, to stop them from being in the semi-finals. How about those playoff spots there? How close do you like that? <laughs> Rab McCullough is in perfect position here. Red on the right, red on the left. Hit the gap, pot the eight ball. He's taken these out beautifully. Rab McCullough looks the absolute mustard in this Northern Ireland shirt, doesn't he? He's been very impressive, he really has. Holds on the yellow just to make sure. This eight ball to win the match. Northern Ireland have done it. A big win for them. It almost guarantees them top two. They will take their place in the semi-final and it also knocks the Moroccans out. They can no longer win this match. They can no longer qualify. It will be heartbreak for the hosts. The highest they can finish now will be seventh. It is not enough for the top six and a shot at the playoffs. And that Northern Irish win will be celebrated by the likes of Ireland, Wales, India and France. There's one less team to gun them down. Huge match there for coming up. In the final round of team matches, Belgium against Malta. Malta must win. And that will take them to nine victories. France, India, Wales and Ireland, therefore, all cannot afford to lose because lose and they are then vulnerable. India play Ireland. That match is enormous. I think Northern Ireland have France as well. So for Malta, they've got you know they can have high hopes of a win being enough to get them in there with one of the top sides playing France. Although it doesn't play out that easy. Yeah, Wales have Senegal. You'd fancy. I mean, Wales are enormous favourites for that match. That would be a huge, huge upset if Senegal were to win that. So Wales have got one foot in the playoffs. India versus Ireland is now absolutely enormous. 
would say especially for India, looking at the frame difference, which it feels like it come, could come down to, because if Malta were to win, India were to lose, Malta would have the frame difference. So out of the top six, the most vulnerable right now definitely feels like India and France. For sure. If you're India and Ireland, you all of a sudden become enormous Northern Ireland fans. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if they can get the job done against France, they're safe. But that table is absolutely razor tight. The other thing to note on the, the schedule is the fact that I don't think they play until Monday, their final round of games. So they're all going to have plenty of time to think about it, what's required, all the different ramifications of results. They'll all know exactly what's what by the time they play Friday, uh, sorry, excuse me, Monday evening. We're going to turn our attention to the shootout and the Masters over the next three days. So they'll have plenty of time to think about yeah. that final match. I'm not sure what our schedule looks like uh, come that final round, but I would imagine India and Ireland will be front and centre on this table. Exactly, yeah. Uh, it's the same day as the, the men's and ladies' quarterfinals and semifinals, so we'll have the, the quarterfinals in the morning for you, lots of them, and then we'll have team matches followed by the individual semis. Plenty of pool on that day for sure. Plenty of very important pool. And you can watch every single ball that matters at this tournament. We've had a fantastic first week. We're on to day five now, but worth pointing out, it is only getting bigger and better. Heading into the second week, there is so much action to come. And you'll see all the frames that matter live on Ultimate Pool TV. You can get your subscriptions in now for those watching on Ultimate Pool TV. You can ignore this message, you already know. But for those on YouTube, if you want to watch the rest of this tournament, you want to watch the rest of the day, we've got some great matches coming up for you. And subscribe to Ultimate Pool TV. You can use discount codes. You'll find them in the description. WPF5 for your first month for a fiver. WPF50 for the whole year for 50 quid. Talking about the matches we've got coming up later, the two matches that follow this, England versus France in the ladies, where the two form teams could be. An early look at the potential final. Obviously, other teams are all going to have a say in that, but the form we've seen so far, that looks like it could be. Australia will take on Ireland as well. Australia going very, very well here this week. Look good for a spot in the semi-finals. Ireland are on the outside looking in, and they have to win that game have any chance so two big games coming up especially for Ireland ladies just feel just a sense of deflation in the arena and Morocco obviously fully aware of what this result means they've been a huge part of this tournament though some of their matches Morocco India was one of the best spectacles I've seen in the sport just absolutely incredible really put on a show for us this week Some mileage in the frame on the right as Gary makes things very messy in the top right-hand corner, but not so messy here for Ryan Marcus. Just two good bits of queuing to get the 12th frame on the board. A little jabby, that one, from Ryan, which means he's got not got the cue ball as far up the table as he wanted, which now means he's got to queue this tough eight ball in from hampered queuing.
Oh, cues it in like a dream. The young Northern Irish start. Beautiful. Gets his first win in the match. Northern Ireland's 12th. And two more frames to go on. The way this frame's going, they could both go on the other table. As this one has plenty of time left in it, you feel. Actually, we could could have plenty of mileage in both these frames. That's not opened up on the left at all. Break the eight ball out here. Uh, yes, it has, but not as much as he wanted. Maybe more pace there just to really get it out in the open. Easy to say in hindsight, though, but he's going to have to play a three-ball plant, two-ball plant, and then play a very good positional shot. Oh, he can see the two-ball plant straight. That helps things massively. No, he couldn't. It's come out well, though. Because when he plays the two-ball plant now, he, as long as he floats it in, he should leave himself a lovely angle to then come down the right-hand side of the table. No, decided to go for the one over the pocket first, bring it back, and then float it around two cushions, I think. Yeah, this is now a tough shot, the line he's trying to find. The yellow in the middle of the table plays huge. Plays it excellently, though. Shaves the yellow on the way through. Gets himself nicely on this eight ball. And a frame on the board.
very muted celebrations, not surprisingly, for the Moroccan team. They know their race is run. Nothing inviting at all for Osama here. Just a horrible layout. And not a time you really want to be out there playing. He will feel very flat like the rest of his teammates. He fought so hard for the past five, six days. Our final match, sorry, excuse me, our final frame of the match is underway. It's powerful, but it's not going to be one for Morocco to take on. Northern Ireland will have the opportunity in our final frame. And Ronan Faye with that chance. Nothing really in the way here for Ronan. Should just be able to float through for a second reverse clearance of the match for him. And finally, the frame on the left opens up. Al Moschini should get this one on the board for Morocco as well. Make it 12-8. How big are those missed eight balls earlier on in this match? Just so many key moments missed in the middle there. Well, it's where you feel like the match really turns. And these matches are long. They, they do turn in those middle frames. And that's where ultimately Northern Ireland won it. Well, they lost five on the trot, did Morocco. And they had eight balls missed in two of those five from 3-3. Three, three. You're always going to struggle to win a match missing those kind of chances and just like that Ronan Faye on an eight ball for another reverse clearance to round out the match the Iceman gets it done it's a very very solid win for Northern Ireland excellent performance and it does knock the hosts out of the competition They've given us so much over the last few days, Morocco, but they just fall short in the end. There will be no fairy tale story in the men's world team event. There's always the shootout, though, and we expect to see the Moroccan passion flying high in that one.
Stay with us. We're going to try and grab a word with a couple of the Northern Irish boys before we head on over to our next match, which will be England versus France in the women's event. A massive game, that one. Two best teams in the tournament so far finally go head-to-head -head on the arena table. Looking forward to that. Before that, though, we will chat with a couple of the Northern Irish players. Do stay with us for that one. If you are with us on YouTube, do be aware that this is the end of your free matches. We'll show you the interview at the end. But if you are wanting to see more matches today and indeed for the rest of the week, head on over to Ultimate Pool TV.